just going to draw today. It's Monday at the 11th. I'm not going to do a fancy intro. Just going to get right to work. And I will respond to people as they call in. And what am I going to draw? I'm going to try to draw something. It was in my head. I was driving around outside, picking up some loans, dropping off a check to the bank. And I was thinking about UFOs because I've been listening to a lot of Joe Rogan. And the. I wanted to do like a spaceship looking thing. And maybe like a dude on a hill. He's like checking it out. And um, some kind of like tree, kind of tree line here. I was looking at the trees from far away. I was sitting in the parking lot of Walmart. And uh, saw the spring blossoms coming in, and they're this bright kind of green, but there's still the darkness in the woods. You see a lot of the trunks and tree growth still. Some there are some pinks out there, not just a little bit, but it was mostly mostly greens and sages. And there, there might be there's like a farming path over here, and uh, just some dirt. But a lot, of, a lot of trees, maybe like a little valley of, maybe like a house or two in the valley and like a barn type thing. So this is going to be a low energy day. I had a couple coffees already. I got up early to receive a check in the mail. And uh, a wonderful mask, my friend Katie sent me and I might remember if you've been following the streams I did I did some fan art for my friend Katie Miko Star uh, and she uh, she told me that she makes COVID masks now too so she sent me one and that's pretty awesome I wore it to Subway and the bank and that was pretty cool so how do I approach and although science fiction, it was recently, uh, you know, what if these people aren't alarmed at the shit? What if they're just casually, like, having a picnic? Um, and, you know, they just, like, came out with, like, a spotting scope or something. A little telescope thing. Thinking about Tales in the Loop. How common science fiction is in the world of Tales from the Loop. I think it's, is it Peter Stalingrad? Stalingrad? I don't remember. We have some beautiful clouds out here today. Just gorgeous. Puffy white clouds. Um, fading in and out. So we'll get, just we'll kind of mask out that silhouette. I'm just going to look out at the sky and see what kind of shapes you know I, I get looking up. I love having a window with northern light. Well, we should open up this other guy here. Let's see if I can look out a little further away. Let the sun out now. My neighbors are out riding their scooters. Let's see. Got a cloud over there. Let's look something. So we got a little white. Be a lower energy stream today because I want to keep keep energy for later. Just drawing from life right now. Just a, little, just a quick paint. Big clouds right above us. So as we look out, the, the massing is going to be a lot bigger as I look outside my big newsroom window, as they say in the biz, talking about Josh Spiegel from 98 Ra, big newsroom window, which I don't think he actually has, but he makes that up. I don't think they got a window in the office, in the sound room. It's kind of cool. It's fun, it's a big, big shape, so... 
But the higher, the more you look upward, the more the underside of that cloud you'll see. And the sky gets darker as you look up. So try to get, try to incorporate that. And it's going to be another little puffy cloud there. Smaller. These shapes get smaller and smaller. And even maybe dimmer. Like I think the brightest, brightest elements would be closest to you. It's the most amount of light. It makes you squint the hardest, doesn't it? That's pretty cool. Dimmer over there. Something like that. This is uh, you know lighter and dimmer too still, even still, and like where the sky is and where the shadow under the clouds is, is even ambiguous, and we're gonna use that ambiguity to our advantage. Let it up for the interpretation of the viewer, just for now. Maybe there's like some shadowy kind of clouds too. If you have some lower altitude clouds that are being shaded. Or the upper two clouds, like it's very possible that this cloud above on the top here is going to shade this like little puffy cloud that's in the foreground of a big, bigger cell back here. And if you want to really make it feel like it's further away, you can reduce the scale of the details a little bit. So just like arching the top, the little puffy bits. All right, so my clouds changed that path. So now the sky is completely different out there. I might look for cues for color and shape and detail and stuff, but I'm not going to be trying to mimicking that cloud any, anymore. So when we serve the painting, what else are elements that we want to do? I, I want a clear definition that this thing is in the sky, that there is some kind of anomaly, some type of ship. And these people in the foreground here are going to be looking at the ship. Or no, they're actually looking at each other. They were looking at the ship, and now they're having a picnic. I think that's funny. Am I going to run? You wouldn't expect. I want them to, to normalize um, this experience. So we got some kind of guest visitor. This visitor is enormous. And this is going to be some kind of... You know, and domestic type settings, maybe a field. Fields and grass are typically brighter than the foliage because foliage, even if you take a leaf and put it on the ground, and let's say you find that that leaf has the same chroma light brightness as the grass blades themselves, the grass isn't going to be as shaded. Like the density of illuminated grass versus shaded grass is different from a tree that is mostly like shaded as long as a couple and then a tree is just kind of opaque when you when you put all that massing together so there's, there's more of this shaded side and lit side it's a three-dimensional object grass is more like a carpet it's all receiving light it's pretty flat and it's not self-shadowing to the degree a tree is so in general if you average the shadow 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 side and the sunny side then it's going to be an average darker than the blades of grass below it but typically the, the leaf is going to be darker than a blade of grass anyway especially if you have evergreens pines that kind of stuff and so these this tree line back here is really just a series of shapes like we're not going to get detailed into um, that. So yellow, yellow might be a little too, that's maybe too fall. We're going to go spring green. Um, just a little dimmer. Just kind of Aaron. All that. And more dirt soil um, around the house. Maybe some like gravel, like driveway kind of stuff. That'd be interesting too. House can be kind of the same way as the trees in that you have clear, clear shadow side and then lit side. Let's merge these two layers together. Merge the whole thing actually. I'm not being particular today. And 
Then you have like how do you how do you handle a darker roof? It's kind of weird, right? I give a dark roof, and you want to have a three-sided shadow lit building. Already there. It's weird. Um, I have five people watching right now. That's pretty cool. Thanks for joining me. Three. Interesting. Well, trying to. Uh, The, the feedback I get from Facebook as I'm using this is a little confusing, so sorry if I'm late at responding to people watching it. Hopefully I'm sharing some information. Thanks for checking in, liking it. Let me know you like this kind of stuff. And feel free to suggest ideas. If you want to see something, if you want to ask questions, maybe I can do a little demonstration. I don't think I'm any kind of expert at this, but I do have fun with it. Lately, I've been trying to get inspired. I might spend you know, three hours a day looking at inspiration to motivate myself to maybe make something. I was just out and about, and I was looking at the different cars that were in the parking lot. It's more pretty cool. There's a new Hyundai out there. It's two-tone, little purple highlights and accents on it. Kind of cool. I like the Subarus a lot. I like looking at how practical they are. They have a nice stance. They look aggressive, like they're going to go jump on a rock. Not aggressive, like they're going to hurt somebody. That's like a Mustang. A Mustang or like a Ford F-150 is aggressive and like, don't mess with me, man. Knock your lights out. Like Francis and Ghanu. You saw that fight. My goodness. My goodness. Ngano is a beast. 20 seconds. Knocked out his opponent. A boom. Rogan said it best. He brought a cannon to a gunfight. Or something. He brought a bazooka to a gunfight. <laughs> Do not want to fight. Do not want to get into a fist fight with anybody, but especially not him. I would be out. You'll be knocked unconscious, my friend. So, if you, I think vignetting the edges always helps a little bit. Just focus the composition in. So, I'm just going to grab some of the outside kind of colors and just darken it a little bit. Make a decision. What's over here? If you can't decide what's there, fill it with something. I think that conveys an idea better than nothing so let's just put something there put something some trees so when you have when you have a canopy of trees that you see the edge of the the tree line as an exposed series of trunks you know that's been manually cut because natural forest starts with bushes on the outside and long grasses and it kind of blends steadily into a, some kind of over or I think so those leaves those trees they don't really want to grow tall except that they have to get to the light compared to their other trees around them so the trees I think they only really want to grow as tall as they need to they'd rather grow bushy and wide and get maximum light coverage coming down. Think about a solar panel, right? Like the more, the wider that solar panel is, the more light it's gonna collect, the more electricity. Uh, so saying two people are watching me now, I'm not crazy about this interface. I might, maybe this week's a good week to start going to Twitch. There's some other, some other site. So what does this aircraft look like? I've got an idea in my head for kind of a geometric uh, spaceship type thing. Like it would actually be pretty good to put this on a different layer. At this point, I might select this whole, this generally my shape for the ship. Control Shift C, Control V. Oh no, just Control C because it's one layer. If it was multiple layers, Control Shift C. It collects all visible, but it doesn't work for some reason when it's only one layer. It's kind of annoying. 
me get the uh, camera changed a little bit so we're looking at the drawing process here. That's maybe that's a little bit better. Control C, Control V. All right, so this is now its own layer, and uh, I'll just kind of delete a bunch of stuff. Still need a bunch of stuff. That would be fun. Maybe we can do some experimenting with silhouette by maybe making some interesting shapes. I mean, that's kind of cool. So I just made a bunch of high energy marks, and now I'm looking inside of these marks and trying to find inspiration from them. Maybe the idea is there's some kind of a sensor or weapon system. I don't know. So let's, uh, let's just draw into this shit. Oh, the background is a little annoying, though, isn't it? Kind of hurts. Usually I draw my subject matter first and then come in with some background stuff. But today we're just going to shift it up and go where the wind takes us. Get some kind of airship. I'm going to lit top side. Get a primary lit side. Yeah, it's like this the primary lit side. It's primary lighting. Uh, maybe a little green on the underside since since it's gonna be bouncing off the green world below. Just, just kinda hint. That's too green. It's too too bright. Too saturated. It's kinda at the background. Let's paint over all let's paint over all this because we're going to change the shape of this spacecraft. It's nice to have an environment to work in. So I'm just going to fill up with some color and extend the drawings that we already have made here. That's cool. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because it's not worth spending time on anything if we're just going to cover it back up. So just quick, just real quick. That's good enough. Kind of spaceship thing. It might be fun to have a little. One of the artists I like is is Berkey. I think it's John Berkey. He does these beautiful sci-fi space paintings. Let's see if I can pull one up. A folder on my computer just that's inspiration art stuff. I think is cool. It might be Lowish. It might be Sid Mead. Might be some sci fi art, might be some video game stuff. Here's an example of a Berkey, and you have these wild colors and obvious brush marks. Big white spaceships that have some kind of rainbow drive system. I think the rainbow represents the mythical. That's pretty cool. Thinking about his work. Real brushy. It's inspirational. It gives you an idea, an impression, and then your imagination can run with it. Something like that. Great composition. Really cool. Using the rule of thirds. It's got some good elements. There's a there's a bunch of characters here. It's like a bunch of cowboys or something coming out of this hovering spaceship. It's surreal. It's weird. It's almost almost makes you uneasy. You can recognize these as objects because they're well lit. They're a three-dimensional volumic object. And then you recognize this as a landscape. You know, is that burning a pool of sulfur? Is it the sunset? It's something that feels like nature, doesn't it? Feels like a sunset. Feels like a maybe a field of grain. Maybe it's lava. Or maybe it's just the sun reflecting off the ocean be a bazillion things, but it's something familiar. Here's another Berkey painting, a little bit more refined. More refined, lots of little antennas. Recognizable shapes like this sail. Uh, this feels nautical. This shape here feels like a yacht, something that came off of a yacht or maybe a Boeing 7, maybe an aircraft, car uh, some kind of airliner. It feels streamlined, right? And this this feels like some kind of fin other in the water or in the sky. Um, it's cool. And the repeating shapes here. When you see repeating shapes, that says manufactured, built, man-made, made by intelligent life form. 
something. Well, thanks for tuning in, whoever's here. I think Ryan checked in. Jack, you might have checked in. Checking the Facebook feed. Thanks for y'all who poked in, poked around. This is a... Uh, it, it, face, Facebook is, is somehow missing the philosophy, like the creator audience relationship bit. I think they're trying, but... There isn't that Steve Jobs like designer at the top who's who's really the advocate for the user. I don't think there's a really good user advocate there. I think I think the advocates at Facebook are mostly representing the ad paying people. I mean that's their Facebook's real client, their real customer are the people buying ads. And then we're the content. Like, we should be benefiting if this was like a traditional market system. And how am I benefiting this? Well, I want, it makes me feel good to share my process with all of you. And, it, and in turn, when I get feedback, uh, I, I feel rewarded for doing so. That's an emotional uh, feeling that makes me feel good about making artwork. In the broader context, making artwork is a good thing for civilization. It's recording the feelings and the ideas of the times. The work people do is a reflection of how they think. Reflection of how they think. So, if you want to make this thing feel constructive, you got to use some visual language that we would find in construction so grids beams patterns some something maybe some contour lines that give us like an indication of the shape uh, we can go a little bluer on one side of this ship I'm seeing it a little bladed I wish it was a little more tilted away so we could kind of see more of it. So the I'm thinking of a wedge shape at the front. Maybe that doesn't really work. It's good to look at air show photography and see what what works well at air shows. Because I like the idea that there's a wing, some kind of aerial control surface there. Maybe there's a little fin. Maybe this is like a couple small vortex control type surface things. See that's familiar. Like seeing this wingtip shape is a familiar shape because these are on 747s or 737s. Commercial aircraft. We know that's some kind of control. Uh, area control kind of mechanism. Um, I like the idea that there's some kind of hanger bay. I mean, form follows function, right? I think maybe I'm thinking about a giant airship because I just played through the the Rito area of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I don't want to spoil anything, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. And it was pretty darn cool. So maybe, uh, maybe there's a, it's like a couple people that are like up here. There's my activity. This is some kind of, it looks like a mouth, the way I just drew that. I don't, I don't like that it looks like a mouth. I want it to look like a hanger bag. Something from, from a Star Wars kind of universe. This, this round shape is going to be some kind of dome, inverted. Uh, the Star Destroyers in Star Wars have these domes underneath them. They look they might be power generators, propulsors, something along those lines. Sigma Oasis, you're already there.
what if I moved me over here? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, how about that? Maybe I'm not in the way as much. Let's be over on the other side of this drawing. Thanks, Drew. Glad you think it's a cool looking shit, man. Trying uh, something something different today. Maybe we get, like a recognizable aircraft flying up here. The scale. This looks more like a fighter of some kind. Uh, what's some talking about pattern at the opening like pattern makes something feel constructed not made made with the work of a hand so I'm thinking about industrial patterns of grids grid work, steel grid work of some kind and just so that's gonna be cross section lines with some repeating half dome shapes I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that sage ground green that these things reflect just a little bit of some big circle shape let's make a hollow shape so these would be con Vex shapes, they're poking down from the platform part of the hull. And then we want a concave shape up here, maybe. Yeah, it's on the other side there. I don't like how obvious this thing is. If you ever wanted to land, like how, does, does this thing land? Does it ever settle down into. It's gonna have some massive landing gear, don't you think? Asymmetry is pretty fun when it comes to spaceships. Uh, symmetrical is a little bit more obvious uh, that something would work, but if you have a little asymmetry, that can that can be fun too. Drew says, geez, Tom, always in the way. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if I like I'm thinking this bay is looking forward, but it's not really working for me. It doesn't feel good. So I'm going to paint over that open garage bay, and I'm thinking maybe it's going to be a different kind of shape. It is, is, uh... Well, actually, the bottom of the ship will be a little brighter than the sides. I think more light is going to be bouncing off the bottom. So the vertical shapes that are within the substructure of the ship will probably be bluer. And then it's going to be greener at the bottom. And that'll be our three-point lighting type uh, business. So we want some kind of bay there. Looks like an aircraft carrier where you have a bunch of doors and windows and open open stuff. 
along the sides, not in the front and the back so much, maybe in the back, but you want that front to be able to cut through the ocean. So I like little dangly bits. The little dangly bits are sometimes known in the industry as greeble. It's little squares and bits of noise to make the object feel bigger and more detailed. And they can be generic shapes. They can be just impressions of windows or grid work, girders, antennas. Any tiny, teeny tiny detail that can give this giant object a sense of scale. I was looking at, on um, one of the image blogs I follow was a picture of the tail of a typhoon class Russian submarine. Maybe that's what's in the back of my mind. And I saw this, the scale of a person next to that thing and was like, Jesus, it's big. I think it was this picture here, something like that. You see the submarine is this big ship, and it's such a cohesive exterior shape with little of that greeble. There's an antenna up here, but until you see a person on the back of that ship, you don't really understand the sense of scale of this thing. When it's just a big monolithic hull, that could be two feet wide or that could be a hundred feet wide. I really don't know. It's not until you put a person next to it do you understand the scale of this thing and my goodness they're big you know I can't honestly believe that they're that stealthy I feel like actual submariners who watch on a photo October are like Psh, you can hear the typhoons a thousand miles away man they're not stealthy at all too big this place too much water yeah, I could I could look at submarine stuff all day, and I love military technology. Cool. Close that. Coffee today by Black Raffle Coffee Company. It's all right. It's all right. My coffee's getting. I bet I think I bought it two months ago. I'm still working my way through. <laughs> Pre-COVID two-bagger of coffee, two pounds of coffee I bought back then. I only have a cup and a half a day. I don't drink that much coffee, which is a good thing. Cause like when I really need to stay awake, that coffee works. Maintain my sensitivity. So, what do we think? Do we think two balls? That's a little too obviously phallic. I'm going to do a couple other shapes. Um, maybe some kind of down, down fin for landing gear. That might be cool. Maybe we'll even deploy it. Now this feels kind of bird-like, but that's cool with me. I wonder if this thing's coming in to land. That'd be cool. I mean, it wouldn't crush that house. Ooh, shadows would be good. Right. Uh, let's multiply. Let's multiply the sun. Well, the sun. We'll make this like a secret shadow, because the the shadow would actually be cast kind of far back on this thing. So that could be cool. Just a little shadow is like the shadow is behind the hill. So it's not the most obvious thing. It's not an ominous kind of shadow, but it's coming. Getting a little hint of it. Uh, let's do something with the foreground people here. Uh, let's, let's put this guy on a cooler. I think that'd be fun. Uh, let's give him a traditional like lumberjack style. Just a little silhouette. What can we do to make it immediately recognizable? I don't want this person to be alarmed. I don't want it to be like casual. I don't know. Fly casual. I 
endangered the mission. I shouldn't have come. I don't know, kid. There's all kinds of command ships in the galaxy. What chances of Vader's on that one? Let's see. Get some blue jeans. Cooler. Probably pretty bright white on one side. I'm thinking a lot about Stalin. Stalin. What's his name? Stalin Hog. Stalin Hog artist. His Tales from the Loop. this figure is doing here. So he's clearly sitting on a cooler. It's, it's easy for me to imagine what dudes are doing. It's hard harder to imagine what, what chicks are doing because I'm not a lady. I don't I can't as easily put myself in that point of view and a uh, mind thing, mind place. I mean reclining is always good, right? I go like traditional art world kind of stuff. Get some kind of yellow dress. Ooh, I like this became a puffy jacket, kind of by accident. It reminds me I need to call my cousin. Like, yo, Luca, what up, dog? I remember you getting that puffy jacket when we were together last, like, three years ago. Went up to, yeah, I'll tell a little story. Uh, my, my cousin Luca and Julie and I went to go visit Uncle Bob and my late aunt Judy in Maine. And it was awesome. Uncle Bob had this great lake house. It was beautiful. And we went out to, we took one day to just go out to Portland, I think, Portland, Maine. Be towards Portland. We at the LL Bean store. Tom, the mind opener. Drew Harris says. Drew said, "Just made me wonder if spaceships would still need in-planet modes of turning, or if they just use the same space modes of turning on a planet." That's the great question of Star Wars because some vehicles in that universe clearly have air control type stuff. I think T6, whatever the, the thing that Luke used to blast Womp Frats in the desert, definitely had some wings on it. And the X-Wing has a wing. The A-Wing is a flying thing. The B-Wing is just a giant wing. Very wing shape. But then the Falcon... I don't think that thing's got any kind of lift. I mean, you could argue that the entire body is a lifting surface, but I don't think it really works that way. It might be some kind of sail, like brute, you know, square rig kind of sail. Like, you could probably get blown around, but... I mean, they got obvious thrust. Like, how a Star Destroyer floats around, though, there aren't, like, the jets, like, shooting right down. It's got this big repulsor lift and a gravity field. And I believe that's how... Like in all this, in the fan fiction, I don't know that the word repulsor is ever used in the Star Wars universe, uh, dialogue, movies, games, but that's what I read in the books, in the, the, the technical manuals and all the fiction that was written around them. They have, the Star Wars universe has some kind of anti-gravity technology thing they call them repulsors, and they just work in gravity fields. And it's like a low low acceleration type thing like it's not going to get you a zero to 60 in three seconds that's what the thrusters are for that's what the main engines are for 
is that acceleration stuff, but the like movement dampening is what those repulsors are all about. I don't know, it's a little weird, it's a little hokey, but I kind of like it. It's cool to see stuff floating around. Uh, but certainly in real life, we definitely have to have space flight controls and earth flight controls because, well, it's just so efficient to use the air we have both in our engines and in control surfaces, ailerons, flaps, tail, like using the air, it's just like sailing a boat, like air is a kind of fluid, just a lot less dense. So if we can use the fluid to swim through, we're going to save a lot of energy than creating our own 100% thrust. So like, but we don't have as much drag in space, so a little bit of thrust goes a lot further. It's kind of this like give and take. I know the British have been working on, not the British in general, but there's a British aerospace company that's been working on a hybrid spacecraft for a while that's got air breathing engines that work at low altitude, low speed relative to space flight, of course. And then as you get higher and higher altitude, they turn into these scramjets that have to super cool the air. It's coming in, the air would be coming in so fast as you get at the hypersonic speeds that it has to super cool the air to get it into an engine, then to combust it again to make more thrust. And then once it gets in outer space, those engines convert into just pure fuel. Uh, like maybe liquid oxygen, maybe they bring some liquid O2 on board with them. And as we can tell, it hasn't gone anywhere. The technology is just too complicated. And I think the weight of the engines is just too ridiculous too. The reliability and, and weight of those things is not worth, the juice is not worth the squeeze as it, as it were. So I'm not loving that pose, but it's something for now. We know that there's a couple characters over there. Yeah, it's wild to think about that they have to carry all that fuel with them when they go into outer space. The space shuttle itself doesn't have much onboard fuel. It has just a little bit of fuel to, to run the ohms engines that are by the tail of the small ones. But those big, the trio of big engines in the back of the space shuttle were all fueled by that giant orange fuel tank because so that thing had two big tanks inside of it oxygen oxidizer and hydrogen so liquid o2 liquid h2 and they got combined at high altitude and then into the low earth orbit to get it up to speed but once it was at speed it dropped that tank and then if it had a maneuver it just used the two smaller ohms thrusters if they had to speed up slow down it uses those to drop out of orbit. Like it has enough fuel on board to slow itself en enough to begin to descend back towards Earth, and then all the slowing down from there happens because of friction. So this giant like wing going through the atmosphere slows it down. All right, forgive me if this is stuff you already know already. Imagine I'm just repeating it for people who know nothing about uh, space flight, all the mechanics, all that bull. All, the, all that stuff. So just a little, you know, adding a little details every once in a while when we want something to feel bigger, just to change the silhouette just a little bit. There's no like big ass spotlights on this thing. Like there's probably some there's probably some running light type shit. Right return red. What is what is that business? Red right return. I 
probably have this backwards. Yeah, green's left, isn't it? The left side of the ship. Green, red, boat, lights. I gotta look that up. Oh, no, it says the opposite. It looks like... Uh, I can't even... Navigation lights. Red light is always on the port side of the boat. If you see a red light coming at you at night, it means the boat is on your... Is that the boat is on your boat's right which means it has the right of way. A green light is on the starboard side of the boat. So I labeled this right, correctly. Red is on port, green is on starboard. So the length of those words kind of correlates a little bit. Green is a longer word than red, so it's on starboard, which is longer than port. How do you remember that? Red light is always on the port side of the boat. If you see a red light coming at you at night, means the boat is is on your boat's right. It means it has the right of way. I can't understand that right now in my brain, but then again, I haven't done sailing. Drew says red, left, green, right, yup. Okay. My subconscious understands it, but my conscious art making brain isn't um, working glad you're hanging out Drew how you doing man are you are you good today what have you been up to you working playing the games Let's see what my little face on this thing what you want what you, what you, what you want what you really really want I gotta say, Drew is the most reliable watcher. Props to Drew. He's always checking in. He was like, what you got going on, Tom Tom? What kind of jams are you listening to lately? Got a new band you like? Got that Sturgill Simpson sound and fury yet? I think it's good. Is good. I don't want this thing to be symmetrical, but I find myself coming back to the idea of symmetry quite strongly here. Some kind of star pattern, maybe. When I was out in San Diego, I got to see a really dope aircraft carrier coming in, pretty up close, and just the scale of that thing. Five thousand people, quarter mile long, four acres of American real estate, any part of the ocean that's deep enough for it, which is most of it most of it some kind of crane thing in there some kind of business It's also the uh, uh, airship in the Avengers, right? The hover carrier thing. Never seemed like it would really realistically work for me. Helps to know what direction the air person is moving when you can't actually see it. So I imagine you have to know your movement too, and then range find. If it's just if it's just you on the ocean and the other ship on an ocean and you can't see anything, it's totally pitch black. No stars, no moon, nothing. Pitch black. You have your instruments that tells you how fast you're going. Or your knots, right? Like your your rope that tells you how fast you are. It's gotta be hard to know what direction you're going in. You have your compass. Right? So you have your compass, you have your speed. 
And then determining distance and movement of another couple lights would be super hard. White light on the stern, colored lights on the bow, you can tell which way they're facing. Oh, okay. That helps. Thanks, Drew. Is that the same thing for airplanes? White light on the stern, colored lights on the bow. Huh. Pretty cool. I'm thinking there's gonna be some like fluorescent lights inside of this thing. We're looking inside of a hangar here of some kind. A little bit lighter in the front so we get some gradient. Gradient from light to dark helps us give direction to in the uh, art making. establish uh, some some shape here is not as easy as you might think. So one other rule we can use for rendering is the, the steeper the angle, the higher the reflectivity. So if we look at my phone, for example, like if I hold it directly at you, it's pretty shiny, but this is perfectly glass. So it's just going to give us a flat but dark reflection of the world we're in. And as we turn it more, not only is it picking up more of the environment, but it's also going to be even more reflective. See, that's a pretty close, my reflection in that screen is dimmer, but pretty close in terms of brightness. And as a, if I had to do a reflection from, from a different angle, it wouldn't be as reflective. But if we have planes in, oh, let's use my wallet, for example. This is even better, because this is leather. Uh, pretty shiny but it's going to be even shinier the more horizontal it kind of gets. So let me see if I can demonstrate. You see how my finger can be reflected? Oh, this is beautiful. So very little reflection on my finger, just a little bit. No reflection of the finger at all. And as this gets shallower and shallower and shallower, you should see more and more reflection of my finger. I'll enlarge this just for demonstration purposes. So you see now at the very flattest edge, we're getting a very bright reflection off the side of this leather and as it tilts away from you dimmer 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 and just about gone just a little bit I'm actually surprised how much how that's still as reflective as it is but see that's brighter now so we're gonna do the same thing with the planes of the ship facing away from us so we have one face that's looking away from us that's highly reflective and one face that's looking at us that's less reflective it's called specularity I'm pleased how well that demo worked. All right, shrink my ass back down. Looking at the the image through the small preview window, I'm actually liking how this is coming together. Yeah, it's just starting to try to do something. So what that means for us is we can take the blue, this kind of gray sky thing, and hit it uh, a little bit harder if we want to convey that there is a plane on this spaceship moving away from us we have the right to go a little bit higher in reflectivity and brightness um, on the edge so we're just going to hit all the the edges that are bending away from us with a little bit more light So is this thing just like a giant gun? I don't know. Maybe it kind of feels gun-like. Just go with it. Just go with the, the gun concept here. So a big ass cannon. Could be a crane. Could be a thermometer for measuring the temperature of, of space oxen butt. Maybe there's space oxen the size of Missouri. You know, who knows how big space oxen could get? Could be a galactic cattle rancher. 
Um, I like the idea of some just giant freaking flaps coming off of this thing. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, just some aviation principle working its way. So we have some giant flap spoiler business. Just freaking huge. It's bloody huge. Like that. Uh, landing gear. Those feet look very small compared to the size of this thing would actually actually be. Thinking about birds here right now, just a little inspired thing. So we need some forward forward landing um, gear thing. Maybe it's just off the front of this. Maybe there's a. Um, would, it, would it be cool to have a spike? Let's create new. Oh, no, let's create a new layer. And maybe there's some kind of. Um, Spike forward. No, that's that's probably not. Does that feel interesting? I don't like that. Earlier, like really I just have two giant feet. Right, so delete that. I just have just to make this a big. Uh, I'm thinking that the feet kind of fold up. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a giant thing. Kind of a thing. Is that is that stupid? It's a little too obviously like bird-like, and it, it's it's making it a little campy. I'm finding, so I'm not really liking it that much. A little too obviously uh, footed. Here's some like obvious like secondary component that comes down. So if this other other part comes in. Like that folds in as it comes down, like it comes down like this, and then maybe. Probably just like a giant armature would come from the nose. It might be that might be cool actually design some kind of giant uh, like landing skid that can fold down from from the nose. Yeah, that this is this will be much better. I'm already feeling that. Already feeling it. And it'll give us some purpose for this whole front area. Something like that. 
What time is it? 3.35? We've been going at this for what? An hour now? Time to flip it. All right, what are we seeing? Well, the composition of the image is upper left. It's less interesting in the lower right. This bright, this bright bit here is a little bothersome. So maybe uh, let's do a couple things. I, I want to expand it out wider left a little bit. So I'm going to go to canvas size, increase the left edge out. Let's go to 13, lucky 13. And I'm going to grab the edge of the painting and uh, copy it and stretch it. Let's copy it. Oh, what is that tool? I do not even know what I just did. Artboard. I don't even know what that was. Nunca idea. Just take this, pull it over that way. Just we have the colors, um, and that way we can work into this and see if we can balance this composition just a bit. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Some like trees and foliage. Just sort of rock back here. Some rocky bits. So we got a trail. Let's work all this together. Save. It's a good time to save. We've got an hour of work done, ladies and gentlemen. Let's um, find my work folder. Uh, I like that song by System of a Down called Aerials. So we'll call this Aerials uh, 2049. What do you think? 29 years from now? I'm sure it's that big. No, this is like human beings want to have gravitational space flight, like gravitational control for like 100 years. You do a lot more observation of black holes. We could have giant spaceships, but they'd be built in space, you know, using components that we could have uh, flown up. So what do what do I think this needs? I think we need something here, maybe maybe like some kind of shape that comes up. That's obviously aerial like control. Um, maybe like an integrated tail would be kind of cool. I'm thinking like a cruise ship, something that has like a dual rear mast, and then like uh, like some kind of flying tail. Like the problem with these in real life, I mean, it's also kind of Star Destroyer shaped, but in real life, these flying tails have a ton of drag. Uh, so they work on cars, but that's kind of like depending on how you build these things. I mean, the the I remember the P I think it was the P thirty eight Lightning, famous dual engine fighter from World War II, multi role attack fighter aircraft. Very good at the beginning, like 38, 39, 40, 41, pretty darn good. Couldn't really keep up with a Messerschmitt though, or definitely not a two six two. But it was really good in the dive. I think they were pretty good. But the problem was on the dive when those things got to high speed, a lot of instability in that rear wide tail, and sometimes the pilots couldn't pull out of it because they didn't have pneumatic controls for that rear surface. It would just lock up. That rear um, elevator would would be just pinned in place. It couldn't get up or down. It was taking too much work to move. So I don't think the flying tail is aeronautically that great of a design. So that, that shape's kind of close to this little fighter jet, too. I might make it take this fighter jet and just move it just a little bit. It's like Control-C, Control-V. Let's move him. 
What is this artboard tool? I must be getting a hockey. I have no idea what artboard is. Control C, Control V. Oh, it's, what am I hitting? I want move, not artboard. What is that? Move him up just a little bit. Fucking COVID. That's too bright. It's cool. Too bright. It's a wingtip vortices. Uh, let's get this a little higher. What if we do something like that? Something like oh, what's, what's this feel like? It's a game called Titanfall. There was a whole aerial battle scene in Titanfall that I thought was dope. Sometimes you get some happy accidents like that, that kind of line there. Is that cool? It's kind of fun. It's like a Shogun type arch. Here, something flying over. I've had a bunch of low flying aircraft in Shrewsbury. I think it's because where I live is high ground between New York and Baltimore so that when helicopters and airplanes and things are flying over they go like, oh we're you know shorter altitude Mookie Mookie what's up man what's up, what's up? move these things back we have the cooler back here Kind of two tier type thing. Okay, back here. Like a three wing, three wing kind of design. Yeah, that's fun. That's pretty neat, huh? And that's just because I wanted a little bit more. Just wanted a little bigger shape back there. I don't know. Trying to, we're just we're just exploring the stuff. So that is not someone I want to talk to, especially in the middle of a drawing session. We got airplanes. We got spaceships. Probably need some markings on this thing. Um, that Shogun idea makes me think this is Japanese. It makes me think that this is not an Imperial Japan, but it's a uh, let's, let's do something kind of kind of like international. We're gonna have a we're gonna have that. And we're gonna have a cycle pattern. So, Hamanaha, Hamanaha, something like that. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, a lot. I see a lot of people put numbers on the sides of things, like a carrier, to make it feel like extra cool. So we're gonna go like forty-five. Does that feel cool? Having a number on there. That's all too battleship, isn't it? Battleship. Let's so have some numbers. Oh, that's kind of cool. So 
So when in doubt, purple. something it's a little structure like underneath the wing kind of lifting slash gramjet type business I want to wrap this up because I've got other things to do but this is still fun Astronaut flying in space, coming in for a landing. Oh, we forgot to put ailerons on this side. That's what I wanted to do. Put the flaps, flappy boys. Like that. Ooh, get a little headache. The coffee kicked in. Just wrecking me. Big shapes. Pretty cool. So this is gonna be our forward landing gear is in this area up in the front. Get some more of that green. It's a little bit of this this balance collar. Let's do 40% maybe. 40 is too bright. Let's do 30%. Just gonna kind of lighten up just the bottom, just a little bit. Do we like it? It's the beauty of digital is you can experiment. I think it's too bright. So we'll just go over with a little purple. Uh, mid, just go 10% multiply. 14% is pretty good. Just come back. Okay. One thing, I have more size here than on the left. So what I really should do is expand the left side of the midline of this shit. Think, do I want to paint it or just want to manually grow it out? Just a little bit more there. Shrink that side maybe. Feel cool. I don't know, man. I want this wing that's closer to us to be a little bigger too. So maybe let's copy this whole thing.
This feels a little better. Feels a little better. Maximum illumination on the front of the ship. What do you think? Mookie had an exam today. JDF. What's JDF? Japanese Defense Force? Probably. Mookie is loving the ship design. Bummed out about that game. Zelda? I forget what game I was talking about. Titanfall 2? I forget which one. Eating a late lunch. I had a late lunch too. I went to Subway. Eating a late lunch now though, man. It's almost 4 o'clock. That's very... It's, it's call it dinner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bottom massage machine go. Bottom massage. Save. Save the file. All right, so she's got a yellow dress on. What's up, girl? How's your yellow dress going on? It's going on good? Like that. She's got some janky arms. But not everything's gonna be a masterwork, and not every part of your masterwork is gonna be masterful. So you just gotta kinda go with it. Whatever whatever you feel like you can do. And I am running out of steam, ladies and gentlemen. So we're just gonna wrap this thing up quick. Some kind of antenna back here. I don't know. Some kind of space. Space Force Tracking System 9000. It's got those little like domes on it. I think it's got like a CB radio thing. Okay, who knows? Who knows? Not my problem. Just got a hint at it. Let's get some grasses. We're just going to get some high energy, you know, high energy grass kind of action uh, screen. Make it fun. Making it fun. Didn't finish that house down below, so we'll get on that. Some deliberate cloud shapes down the corner. Let's do some shadow on the grass by the tree line. <coughs> ah, COVID. Go away. Who invited you? Oh, civilization? Civilization invited you? Are you saying, COVID, that we, uh, we we went beyond the bounds of our Garden of Eden cage? And you got you had to pop up to stop us? Bat, all the bats of the world got together and had a protest. And they're like, we've had enough of these humans coming into our caves. Let's give them something to look forward to. Pes pesky humans. You know what happened? 
they found the two nastiest bats in their brood and were like, hey, hey, Jerry, Jerry the gross bat and and Monica the gross lady bat. We're going to get you two together and make a super, super bat nasty. Give it to those people. They're encroaching on our caves. Yeah, it was out last night. True story, I was out watching the moon through my telescope. And I saw so many critters flying in front of the moon. And that telescope just has a small point of view. Like, think about the size of the moon compared to all of the sky at night. And I saw so many things flying. Flying in front of that. Little bats and night birds and all kinds of all kinds of business at night. Flying in front of the moon. It's like, man, how many things are up there? I must have been at like three, four hundred feet. Uh, a few hundred yards away from me, between me and the moon. Because they were in focus and my focus was set to really, really distant. So for an object to be in focus flying in front of me, it had to be several hundred yards out. At least in semi-focus. I mean, as, as sharp as anything that's flying by can be. Right. Right. Yes, you must agree with me. It's a little too saturated for a skin tone. A little too. It looks like kind of burnt. Like kind of. I wonder if it'd be on some kind of carpet or rug. I'm not really sure what. Usually, if I really cared about these figures, I would line draw them out first. But I'm working backwards, like going a silhouette to the inside instead of inside outside. I just want something. I mean, these people are here just to give. The object some scale and give it a sense of place. So uh, as long as it's like okay, that's good enough. I'm not going for perfect here. Obviously, never going for for perfection. It's good. If I can make something good. Oh yeah, there was a whole other object here. I was gonna draw some kind of landing craft. I don't care about it anymore though. Forgot. Forgot. No longer care. Some kind of pilot ship that would assist in uh, assist in the landing procedure. Things like that. Maybe maybe some kind of pilot ship. That's cool. Maybe that would be. We have. Really loving the front, the front edge of this whole shit. So, um, this thing comes back a little bit. Yeah, it's, I want the the front end to be a little narrower. I think maybe some, maybe some more bladed. It's a little wishy-washy. I wish the clouds were a little bit more specific. They're running out of time, losing interest. But I just wanted to get some kind of spaceship looking thing roughed out for y'all. Because why, why don't you deserve a little space flight? 
in your day. Who doesn't? Who doesn't deserve a little bit of uh it might be kind of cool having some like some vortexies like coming off of that wing tip there. Big you, you would have such crazy this thing might have its own like weather system. It's moving so much air as it's coming down. Right. breaking weather system Titanfall 2 right yeah YouTube Mookie thanks for popping in take care man letter B like drawing today thanks Brandon welcome this is our farmhouse we got spaceship flights today and all through the year. I never seen the northern lights. I never heard of caustic clouds. I never seen the stars so bright. In the farmhouse, we're gonna be all right. I'm sorry to let you know that if you were in the farmhouse, when this thing comes crashing down on top of you, you will not be all right. You'll be singing a different tune after 400,000 tons of space metal uh, crashes your weekend plans. Sorry to say. Tom, how could you say something like that? This is a beautiful scene. I need a little bit of reality in every bit. Of my day. Let's go farm barn. Little farm barn. Look, they came up with those words knowing that they'd rhyme. Farm barn. Get some cows. I don't know. Grazing animals. I never seen the northern lights. I got this backwards. I got the silo next to the house, so I'm gonna kill that. Let's get rid of that silo there. I have uh, some kind of fireplace though. Fireplace is good. I don't want a white house back here. White house black market. to have lost my cursor. You'd be like, Tom, why are you so con convoluted as you're painting? Well, uh, my glasses are pretty darn weak. And I have them that way for a reason. I don't want to weaken my eyes any more than they have to be. Cool. Thinking about violating some stay at home orders and going road tripping, but I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to make some poor sheriff go out of their way to like pull me over on the side of the road and be like, Look, come on, dude, what are you doing? Governor Wolf said to stay at home, so why don't you just stay home? And I say, you know, I want to think that this is a free country. You know, I can go visit people because we're all not with the quarant. You know, the, no one's got the COVID in my family, and uh, I haven't been out that much. But you know, they want they want us to stay home, so we staying home. We being nice. We being agreeable to this for the time being. Spaceship. Spaceship, spaceship. I'm going to need some clothes. 
cloud business over here. It's kind of fun, kind of high energy. Let's get some volume on this rock business here. Miyazaki style heel scene. Heel. Heel. I don't know, man. I just work here. After drawing all this, I'm thinking about a nap. Yeah, it's fun. I'll call it a dot. That's cool. Thanks for hanging out with me today, folks. It's fun to do some drawing. Uh, this is cool. Kind of feels airy. Feels like liquid almost. Like stuff's moving. There's some natural motion in it, and I think that's cool. Kind of wondering what's going to happen with this big old bird that's coming into land. And uh, I'll be posting it up. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for saying hi to everyone who was here. And I hope you have a good week. Cheers.